Hello class, this is Fire Service Hydraulics and Water Supply, Chapter 2, Water at Rest, also known as Hydrostatics. After completing this lesson, you will be able to explain physical principles that affect water at rest. Learning Objective 1. After this learning objective is completed, you will be able to state the five basic principles of pressure, explain the relationship between head and head pressure, and explain the potential energy of static water. The first thing we're going to talk about are the five basic principles of pressure. Principle one. Principle one states that the pressure at any point in a liquid is applied equally in every direction, meaning it's in a state of stasis. This is also known as Pascal's law. And the sixth principle is fluid pressure is perpendicular to any surface on which it acts. So you can see water in this flask, the pressure is perpendicular to the flask. And then on the top you have atmospheric pressure pressing down, so the water is in stasis. Principle two is pressure applied on a confined liquid from an external source will be transmitted equally in all directions throughout the liquid without a reduction in magnitude. So you've got pressure coming from above, but the water inside still expands in pressure in a unilateral fashion. Principle three, the pressure created by a liquid in an open container is directly proportional to the depth of the liquid. When you're talking about pressure, and here we're just talking about general atmospheric pressure, when a body of liquid is static, the force it generates is equal to its weight. So the formula is pressure equals force divided by area. When a body of liquid is static, the force it generates is equal to its weight. This allows us to determine the amount of pressure created overall. Some more formulas you need to know. For a 1 inch by 1 inch by 12 inch column of water, the pressure equals 62.4 pounds divided by 144 inches squared. And that comes out to, that was the formula we just used on the previous page. We're just plugging in the numbers. So the result is 0 0.433 pounds of PSI, or pressure per square inch. If we stacked three cubic feet of water on top of each other, the resulting pressure would be as follows. Pressure equals 62.4 pounds times three, divided by 144 inches squared, equals 187.2 pounds divided by 144 inches squared, and the final answer is 1.3 PSI. Note that 1.3 PSI is roughly, through close rounding, three times 0.433 PSI. And that was the problem we worked out on the previous slide. Let's talk about the metric system. In the metric system, one cubic meter is composed of columns that are one square centimeter wide and 100 centimeters or 1,000 millimeters tall. This results in a pressure of 10 kilopascals per meter. Now let's move on to principle four. This is the pressure created by a liquid in an open container and is proportional to the density of the liquid. In other words, the denser the substance is, the more it will weigh by volume. So the heavier it is, the more pressure is created, the more heavy it is again. Now let's go over some formulas here. Pressure equals weight times height, and this is how it's written out. Pressure equals W in parentheses times height in parentheses. So given P equals pressure in pounds per square inch, W is the specific weight of the liquid in PSI per foot, and H is the height of a liquid column in feet. This equation can be applied to water. Here's one example that you see on page 18 in your book that supports principle four. Pressure equals 62.4 pounds 
per foot cubed divided by 144 inches squared divided by foot cubed and your when you calculate it out and it then times height and then when you calculate it out you end up with pressure equals 0.433 psi divided by foot times height if you work off the same principle in the metric system equation 2.2 is expressed as follows and this is in your book again also pressure equals 10 kilopascals divided by meters times height so if it's given that p is pressure in kilopascals or kpa 10 is a constant and h is height in meters so p pressure equals 10 kilopascals divided by meters times height principles three and four are more useful for fire protection purposes if we combine them by determining that the pressure created by a static liquid is equal to its weight multiplied times its height for example what pressure will be shown on a gauge at the base of an elevated water storage tank in which the water level is 120 feet or 40 meters above the pressure gauge we see that here in figure 2.5 if you use UF, US customary, you have pressure equals 0.433 psi per foot times height. And if you plug in the height, you get pressure equals 0.433 psi per foot times 120 feet. And your answer is 52 psi. So the pressure shown on the gauge at the base of an elevated water storage tank would be 52 psi what pressure would be shown on a gauge at a base of an elevated water storage tank on which the water level is 120 feet or 40 meters above the pressure gauge in metric pressure would equal 10 kilopascals divided by meters times height and if you plug in the numbers you get pressure equals 10 kilopascals divided by meters times 40 because it's 40 meters gives you a final answer of 400 kilopascals and that's illustrated in the diagram just as it was on the previous pay, er, slide and this is also in your book what pressure will be shown on a gauge at the base of a storage tank containing oil with a specific gravity that's measured as SG of 0 0.9 in which the oil level is 70 feet or 20 meters above the pressure gauge so we use our formula here pressure equals 0 0.433 psi per foot times specific gravity of the oil times the height let's plug in our numbers on the next step we get pressure equals 0 0.433 psi per foot times 0 0.9 times 70 feet and we come up with pressure equals 0 0.390 psi per foot times 70 feet equals 27.3 pounds per square inch psi remember this is also in your book so make sure you practice these now going to metric what pressure will be shown on a gauge at the base of a storage tank containing oil with a specific gravity of 0.9 in which the oil level is 70 feet or 20 meters above the pressure gauge again you just plug in the numbers pressure equals 10 kilopascals per meter times specific gravity of the oil times the height let's plug everything in next step pressure equals 10 kilopascals per meter times 0 0.09 times 20 and we come out with pressure equals 9 kilopascals per meter times 20 and our final answer is 180 kilopascals okay let's talk about principle 5. principle 5 states that the pressure at the bottom of a container is not affected by the shape or volume of the container the pressure at the bottom of the tank 
depends solely on the depth and specific gravity of the liquid. This principle applies only to pressure, not to force. If the depth of the tank is the same, the weight of the water may differ, but the pressure readings will be the same. Notice that? So the weight of the water will differ if the volume of each tank is not the same, but the pressure readings will be the same. Okay, some review questions. First, what is the term used to describe water that is at rest? Make sure you refer to page 13 of your manual for that answer. Next, according to principle one, Pascal's law, in what direction or directions is liquid pressure created? You need to refer to page 13 and 14 of your manual for the answer to that question. Couple more. Why does external pressure that is exerted on a liquid not result in a volume contraction? You need to see page 14 and 15 of your manual for the answer to that. And next, what is the pressure of a liquid in an open container proportional to? Make sure you see page 15 and 16 of your manual for that answer. Now we're going to discuss learning objective two, where we will explain the relationship between head and head pressure. They're two different things. Head is defined as the following. Head is the pressure expressed in units of feet of water instead of pounds per square inch. Let me say that once again. Head is pressure expressed in units of feet of water instead of pounds per square inch. Here's an equation for you. Head equals pressure divided by specific weight. So if it's given that H equals P divided by W, where head is measured in feet, P is pressure in PSI, and W is specific weight in pounds per foot cubed, then equation 2.3 can be refined for water and fire protection purposes as follows. H equals P divided by W. U.S. customary would come out as follows. H or head equals pressure divided by 62.4 pounds of feet cubed. And if you plug in the pressure at the top, you have H equals P times 144 inches cubed uh, squared times foot squared divided by 62.4 pounds per foot cubed. And if you work out all the math, you come out with head equals 2.31 feet per PSI times pressure. This determines the inverse relationship of principle three discussed above. To demonstrate this more simply, enter 0.433 in your calculator and hit the inverse key. The answer will be 2.31. Now, when you're talking about head in the metric sense, in the metric system, one would divide the number of meters by 0.1 to get the head pressure in kilopascals. So here you have head equals 0.1 meters divided by kilopascals divided by pressure. Here's an example. How far above the ground would the level of water in an elevated storage tank need to be to create a pressure of 60 PSI or 420 kilopascals at the bottom of the tank? For U.S. customary, you'd have H equals 2.31 foot PSI times pressure. Plugging in all the numbers, you get H equals 2.31 foot divided by PSI times 60 PSI equals 138.6 feet. So that's how far above the ground the level of water would have to be in an elevated storage tank to create a pressure of 60 PSI at the bottom of the tank. 
Now, to do this in metric, how far above the ground would the level of water in an elevated storage tank need to be to create a pressure of 60 psi or 420 kilopascals at the bottom of the tank? Then again, just plug in the numbers. You need to know your formula, whether it's metric or US standard. Here you have H equals 0.1 meters divided by kilopascals times P. And then if you plug in all the numbers, you get H equals 0.1 meters divided by kilopascals times 420 PSI equals 42 meters. So 42 meters would be how far off the ground the level of water in an elevated storage tank would need to be to create a pressure of 420 kilopascals at the bottom of the tank. Now head and head pressure are two different things. Head pressure is the amount of pressure created by the height of a column of water. Head pressure is the inverse of head by itself. Review question. What is the difference between head and head pressure? Very important that you know this distinction and you can get or refer to page 21 of your manual for specifics and the answer to this question. For learning objective three, we will explain the importance and relevance of potential energy on static water for fire protection concerns. Potential energy is stored energy that can perform work once it's released. The two sources of potential energy within a water distribution system. There are two sources of potential energy within a water distribution system, and we'll talk about that. You have potential energy due to elevation, and it's denoted as PE sub E. Potential energy sub E denotes elevation. And then you have PE sub P, which is potential energy with pressure. And that is potential energy due to external pressure sources, such as a pump. Energy is the ability to do work. Work is the product of force multiplied by distance, expressed in foot-pounds. Potential energy is the potential or ability to move a given weight force a specific distance. Okay, here's the formula equation 2.4 that you need to know. So, PE equals W times H. Now, it's given that W is any unit of weight, H is any height in feet, which is meters. So the total potential energy within a water system is expressed as PE, lowercase t, equals PE, lowercase h, plus PE, lowercase p. The total potential energy within a water supply system this is the expression right here, this formula at the bottom of the slide. Review question. What types of potential energy can a fluid at rest have? You need to see page 21 of your manual for the answer to that question. Thank you for your time and attention again here in chapter two. If you have any questions, please make sure you contact your instructor. Thanks again and we will see you for chapter three.